Jason Gross closed with MFK Game Calls. Tori and I talked about it, and we wanted to do a short video series this year um, just to tell you a little bit more about our diaphragm calls, how to use them, give you a few tricks and tips uh, that we use to get these sounds, and also give you some demonstrations of what we're sounding like on these sounds, each sound, such as like the lone howls or the barks or the threat bark howls, uh, the kai eyes, uh, the death cry of a coyote, just to give a few examples. Um, I think it's a lot of questions we get. A lot of people, they get the diaphragms and they're not sure where to start because a lot of people haven't used them before. They're basically a new call. Tori started making these several years ago and since then they've really grown in popularity. Um, we've won multiple world championships with them um, and called in piles and piles of fur with them. Um, diaphragms have been around for a while but you never heard anything about them. A lot of people were just using an elk diaphragm uh, turned it into a coyote call. I mean that's fine you're gonna get some sound out of them but with MFK diaphragm be assured you're getting a call tuned exactly to the sounds you want to make you're not trying to take a turkey call and do a distress sound with it or you're not trying to take an elk call and do coyote house with it an elk call was made to call elk a turkey call was made to call turkeys these calls are made to call predators and that's what we pride ourselves in we do a lot of testing um, Tory spends countless numbers of hours developing each call getting the stretch just right getting the latex uh, stack just right and I can't tell you the number of hours he spends on just getting one call just right the way we like it we're really picky with our sound and I think that proves uh, with our stage calling competitions and everything um, if it's not perfect we don't want it on, on our as a part of our call line um, I think you're starting to see a lot more calls coming out um, be careful with those. I mean, some of them could be good, but, you know, we take pride in our calls, and we're just not trying to make cheap imitations of somebody else's call just to make a buck. We're actually out here trying to produce the most realistic call, and honestly, I think we found it. Um, we've got a lot of new calls coming out in the future. Uh, we've actually just came out with our new competition-grade howler, and this thing's amazing. I actually used it for the first time this year in the 2013 World Calling Championships in Waco and end up winning the Howling Division with it. I mean, it's an awesome call. It can't be beat, in my opinion. I'm going to demonstrate this new two-read competition howler we've got out. It's very similar to our two-read pup howler that we've had out for years, which is pretty much our signature coyote howler. Um, I like this call. It's very forgiving. If you know what I mean, um, uh, the tones, uh, the length of how, there's no breaks in this call. I love this call. Like I said, I used it in the 2013 World Howling Championships and ended up got lucky enough to win with it. And um, I'll give you some demonstrations on it. But first, I'd like to tell you how, actually how to use this call and put it in your mouth properly and get it adjusted to where you know you're using it right. First off, when you take this call out of the package, you'll notice there's a short read and a long read. The long read always goes on top. It also, there's a bump on the call frame. That bump always goes down. So you know if you've got the longest read on top and the call bump on the bottom, the latex facing toward the front of your mouth, you're using that call right. Put the call in your mouth, just like that in the roof of your mouth. You'll use your tongue to adjust the pressure of it. And also, I hear a lot of guys saying that when they put the call in their mouth, it gives them a gag reflex. That shouldn't be happening. This call should not give you a gag reflex any more than chewing a piece of gum if you're using the call right. Put it in there where it's comfortable, and if it feels like there's too much tape in there and it's gagging you, just take your scissors, cut right around the edge of this tape, Start small. I'd recommend taking an eighth of an inch or less at a time. Cut all the way around. Just keep the keep the original horseshoe shape that we had, that you your call originally was, and just take an eighth of an inch off. Try it. If it's still gagging you. Just take a little more off. A lot of times that will help. I know I trim every call I get. I take probably close to an eighth to a quarter of an inch of the tape off all the way around it. 
some people's mouths are different and that can really help you when you're trying to fit a call to your mouth but um, putting this call in your mouth stick it in there get a sound it's just a basic couple barks and a howl um, the way I'm forming my mouth, I get this asked a lot, and I'm not the best teacher when it comes to this because, I don't know, I guess I've done it so much it almost comes naturally to me now, but I like to make my tongue as wide as possible. I'm actually biting the edges of my tongue with my, with my rear molar teeth when I'm howling. I'm biting the edge of my tongue on both sides and sort of rolling my tongue in the middle. Uh, what this is doing, it's, it's providing an air channel for that howl to come across the bottom of those reeds. You want a good tight seal against the roof of your mouth with the back of the tape. And the air is actually going to be flowing right across the bottom of the tape and right across the bottom of those reeds. That's what makes your howl. And like I say, what i found works best is making my tongue as wide as possible almost biting just the edges of my tongue real soft like just where it's comfortable don't make this harder than it has to be if you put that call in your mouth and it's not comfortable for you you're doing something wrong get it to where it's comfortable i mean that's what i do i pretty much had to learn on my own uh, back when i started using these there were no instructional videos like this to help me out pretty much just had to learn on my own trial and error and that's what i found out um, everybody blows these just a little bit different everybody has their own method of doing it but that's what works for me and that's a good starting point uh, like i said make your tongue as wide as possible bite the edges of it with your teeth just real softly don't make it painful this doesn't have to hurt this is not a this should be a this is a fun sport <laughs> you don't want to hurt yourself doing it uh, just clamp down a little bit make a good tight seal make your howl uh, the first howl i'll show you how to do is just a lone howl it's simple, um, like I said, just take the advice of rolling your tongue a little bit, just blowing a long burst of air across that call. And I like to hold mine as long as possible, it just makes it, adds just a little more realism to it. I'll give you a demonstration. Alright, All right, that's just your basic loan how. Um, I always like to throw a few barks at the beginning of those howls, just to add a little bit of realism. Uh, to get your barks, it's a little trickier. A lot of people have trouble with the barks. Uh, I hear a lot of a lot of these new guys starting out, and their barks just sound something like this. I mean, that'll work, but. If you want to add some realism to your call, here's a good tip to do that. For those barks, I like to put the call in my mouth just the same way as I told you before, but leave the call a little loose in your mouth and almost to the front of your mouth and tilt it a little forward. I don't like to put a whole lot of tongue pressure and I like to blow quick bursts of air across that call while the call is almost just floating in my mouth. It gives that raspier tone to those barks and I think it sounds a heck of a lot more real. Um, than what you're going to get on these open reeds and all this and there's no way that you can mimic the barks from this diaphragm call with an open reed or even some of the other latex howlers such as like the power howler some of these I've used those a lot and um, you can bark with them but it's not going to match the realism of this call there's no way if you don't believe me just go out and listen just listen to some of those sound clips of some real coyote barks and then compare them to these and you'll see the difference for yourself. I'm not, I'm not sitting here and trying to feed you a big line about all oh, our calls are so great. You know, I think they are and we prove them. That's, that's the difference. We prove that these calls are the best and we've proved it time after time again. And that's what I wanna help you guys do to get the most realism you can out of our MFK diaphragms. Here's a bark. Place, like I said, place the call in the back of your mouth exactly like you did for the lone howl, but leave the call just a little bit looser in your mouth. Don't put a lot of tongue pressure on it and almost tilt your call toward the front of your mouth just a little bit. Not a lot, but keep it tilted almost at a 45 degree angle and leave it loose. And then blow quick bursts of air across those diaphragms. <laughs> 
Here's an example. You see what I was telling you about before, a lot of the guys are doing um, the barks with their diaphragm like this. Now you can tell the difference. I'll do, I'll do a little short series doing them like that, like I hear a lot of these guys doing. And it's not that you're doing it wrong, you just haven't come up with the proper method yet of doing That's what I'm trying to help you guys out with today. Um, I'll do it side by side and just show you the difference and show you how just moving the call a little bit in my mouth can make a world of difference in the sound. This is how I hear a lot. Alright, now I'm going to loosen that tongue pressure just a little bit, tilt that call a little forward, and this is what it turns into. You can tell the difference in realism in that it's a lot raspier bark and it actually sounds like a real coyote and that's the goal. That's what we're all wanting to do out here is sound as realistic as possible to try to fool that coyote to come in. Please.